Welcome to the lecture on intermixing in Tundis. So, when we uh, talk about the uh, Tundis flow, uh, so in the plants, uh, the Tundis will be uh, used as a buffer reservoir and uh, the ladle will be uh, pouring in the liquid steel into the Tundis and from the Tundis the metal will be continuously uh, delivering uh, be delivered to the respective molds. So, uh, the, the um, you know so once the uh, one of the ladle which is uh, bringing the liquid steel uh, from the steel melting shop. So, that uh, once that uh, uh, you know uh, finishes in that case uh, you will have uh, the another uh, ladle waiting in line and the one ladle uh, will be uh, you know leaving that uh, spot and another ladle will be uh, pouring in the liquid metal. So, it will start pouring. Now, there is a time lag between uh, these two processes and uh, that is why that results into certain downgrading of the uh, steel that is known as the intermixing. So, that is intermixed grade. So, uh, you know during ladle uh, uh, change over process new grade intermixes to uh, old grade it will be mixing to the old grade. So, uh, you know that can be understood by uh, you know. So, you will have the uh, turn this and uh, you will have the inlet here. So, one of the uh, ladle so this is ladle uh, you know one and another ladle will be uh, ladle 2. So, that will be uh, waiting. So, the it uh, gets uh, you know it will be pouring in the liquid uh, steel to the uh, turn this and turn this from here it is uh, going to the uh, different uh, you know mold. So, this is your continuous casting mold. Now, the thing is that uh, uh, when this is gets over. So, uh, this has to be taken away and this is uh, brought here. So, it has the uh, liquid steel. Now, uh, what happens that there may be change of the uh, grades uh, from here to uh, you know in this case from. Uh, so, uh, on between these two steels. Now, the thing is that normally uh, when you are uh, uh, casting the similar grades uh, in those cases. Uh, when you are casting those similar grades in that case uh, uh, there is no such problem. Uh, however, there may be variation in the grades. Now, when that varies in that case uh, you know normally uh, your uh, Tundis uh, operates at a uh, at a constant level because the free surface area of the Tundis is very high. And, uh, um, you know uh, the level uh, of difference is uh, small. Uh, although that also uh, you know has effect and that is your residual uh, volume which is there inside the tundis. So, uh, that there will be uh, change that is expected in that case. Now, the thing is that uh, when so suppose it has gone up to certain uh, you know height and then you have uh, brought in the another uh, steel. So, this steel which is going inside it will be uh, mixed with. Uh, so, it will be going and it will be mixing with the, the steel which is already there of this ladle inside the tundis. So, it will be mixing and now this uh, new grade of uh, steel the steel which will be coming out it will be of neither this composition or this composition, but it will be in between them because there will be some amount of this uh, steel and some there will be. Uh, so, large amount of this initially of this uh, ladle and a smaller amount from this ladle uh, and slowly uh, you know its composition uh, the, the steel which was already there it will be depleting and then you will have the uh, new ladle steel which will be uh, replacing that old ladle steel. So, uh, so in this case uh, this is known as the uh, now what you get the steel in between for that time that is known as the intermixed grade steel and its composition will be neither of the uh, ladle 1 nor of the ladle 2. So, many a times uh, uh, this is considered to be a uh, downgraded steel 
and its value will be normally uh, smaller than the normal you know steel. So, uh, what is done is uh, uh, you know in the uh, industry. So, as we see that composition of this mixed grade is different. So, there is less demand uh, of this mixed grade and that is process this process uh, is known as grade intermixing where they are uh, intermixing with each other they are mixing among each other. So, how to you know avoid these intermixing um, intermixed grades there are uh, certain ways uh, by which uh, basically you can avoid these intermixed grades. So, uh, one is the stopping the caster and then you will have the uh, um, uh, so stopping the caster means uh, you completely stop the uh, caster. So, you and then further you use it. So, in that case you can completely stop uh, the formation of intermixed grades, but then uh, you will have your continuity is over uh, you you do not have the uh, you know uh, continuous process of casting. So, and then uh, because uh, there is a large amount of you know uh, involvement of the energy and all that uh, there are many bottlenecks when you start. So, um, uh, so all these uh, are there when uh, you do this uh, take this process. Then uh, you can have the uh, flying turn distance. So, that is also another way by which you can change that and then you can start uh, uh, the work. Uh, there is uh, another uh, also way that is uh, uh, you know um, use of uh, grade separator plate. So, uh, there will be a plate which will be separating that grade. So, the, the old grade will be allowed to leave first and then you remove that plate and then you uh, allow the next grade to go. So, these are basically uh, the way, but they are not practical keeping the continuity of the process in mind these processes uh, are not uh, you know uh, viable they, they cannot be think of a practical you know uh, substitute. So, the thing is that in the industries uh, uh, you will have to continue and also you will have uh, you know not much of the control on uh, changing other parameters like maybe the uh, control in the flow rate or maybe the residual volume amount of the steel which was there in the uh, turn this already. So, these uh, you know things uh, are uh, they may be thought they may be thought of and uh, that is why uh, in normal case we go for the normal uh, ladle changeover. So, you just change the ladle and then the liquid steel will come and it will uh, start pouring the liquid steel into the tundis. Now, uh, this process is expected to uh, give you the maximum amount of uh, uh, intermixed grade steel, uh, but you can uh, certainly uh, reduce uh, by either by uh, altering the flow field uh, or by controlling other parameters like residual volume which is there or maybe that uh, uh, you change the flow rate uh, you know ingoing or outgoing. So, that may have the effect on the uh, intermixed amount volume. So, uh, what we do is this is how the intermixed amount is calculated. Now, uh, this how you get this graph. So, we have talked about the uh, you know uh, getting the RTD curve. So, that is uh, that uh, you solve this continuity equation, Navier-Stokes equation and then after that you solve the uh, you know concentration equation uh, in the transient manner. So, that is what we have already uh, studied. Now, in the case of uh, the when we solve the concentration equation, so we use the tracer and tracer for tracer we can use uh, many things like you use dye or you can uh, have uh, you know an SCL or so. So, the uh, so the salt or uh, dye all these uh, things are used as the uh, tracer in the uh, you know uh, water modeling. 
And uh, we, uh, while we talk about the uh, RTD you know curve that is your C curve. So, that is uh, basically uh, because of the pulse input. So, there you allow the that uh, input for some time and otherwise the uh, flow is uh, going on. So, in that case you get a C type of curve the RTD curve. Uh, what we do is uh, we normally take that uh, new grade steel as tracer itself. So, that uh, you know replaces the old grade. So, um, uh, your concentration uh, you know uh, um, I mean so whole uh, liquid so that will be stopped and next will be the tracer amount only. Now, that will go into the turn this and slowly in that case uh, it will go on. So, it has to increase uh, you know uh, continuously. Uh, because uh, the uh, now the old steel is not going into the turn this only the uh, new grade steel uh, is uh, going into the turn this. So, slowly uh, you know after some time it will start appearing and then slowly it is increasing and as you see at some amount of time the this uh, concentration is reaching uh, close to 1. So, uh, you know uh, 1 means uh, it is uh, it has uh, this is the concentration of the new you know uh, grade. Now, the there are grade specification that is uh, uh, 10 is to 60 what I, I mean to say because uh, uh, if you say that uh, if uh, the uh, new steel is uh, uh, you know uh, has more than uh, 10 percent and uh, less than 60 percent. So, in between uh, when you have uh, the uh, mixing so, the old steel uh, should not be more than 10 percent and new steel should not be less than 60 percent like that. So, there may be different criteria you have stringent uh, lenient criteria and all that. So, based on that uh, you can have a you know amount of calculation. So, basically the thing is that uh, in that time whatever amount of steel uh, is, is coming out that may be uh, you know a downgraded quality of steel and uh, that needs to be rejected. So, what you do is uh, that uh, by plotting this graph you see that for how much of the time which can be measured on these uh, ordinate uh, axis. So, that will be multiplied with the uh, flow rate. So, that will be uh, giving you the uh, amount of um, uh, the steel which is uh, uh, going to be of uh, the uh, intermediate grade and, and that uh, may be removed. So, so that is why uh, you know uh, now we uh, have uh, uh, done certain work that you can refer uh, and you can also see that you have a, a turn days you have in one inlet and you have three outlets and you use the advanced putting box as the uh, the flow modifier, this uh, nozzle, bath height, and all that are there. So even experimental work can be done. So and then accordingly, you can have the uh, you know uh, see to, you can you can see that how they are you know behaving, how these uh, uh, things are captured, how the measurement is being done. So uh, if you try to do the uh, modeling physically, what you have to do is you have to have two ladles, and you have a flow meter, and then you have the uh, inlet nozzle here. So you allow this uh, liquid steel to allow. So you will have uh, two type of uh, uh, fluid, and and one you can uh, you know color, and another you can be it can be uh, white or so or, or of different color. So, normally we one is water and another is the tracer that is salted solution or the dye. Then uh, we allow this and uh, uh, once it is reaching up to certain height bath height. So, at steady state it will be the, the flow will be uh, going on and then what you do is you stop uh, this part and uh, allow the liquid. Uh, uh, you know water may be allowed to be this part. So, uh, and you have the conductivity meters uh, which is fit at these outlets and that uh, they are basically measured with the help of this uh, data logger. So, you have a conductivity meters 
by that you measure the outlet and that uh, is being you know measured. So, that is how this concentration comes. So, at our different outlets you will have different lines. So, um, at the near outlet it will start uh, maybe uh, somewhat slow and at the far outlets which is far from the inlet uh, that may appear a little late. So, that uh, you will see and then from all the outlets you can measure. So, what is the intermixed amount uh, being calculated and that can be you know uh, uh, accordingly you can have the decisions the plant may have decisions what to do with that kind of intermixed grade of steels. So, this is just showing one example of uh, uh, this uh, uh, tracer dispersion and what you can see is that this is the experiment. So, you gave the um, you know uh, this is how the flow is going on with water and then you started you giving tracer. So, what you see that after uh, you know after some time when you put the tracer continuously. So, it, it is uh, taking and it is all going and taking that in 168 seconds and uh, uh, you know that can be even understood with the help of uh, the uh, experience of the simulation also. So, um, uh, that is seen that how it is uh, progressing, so, how the tracer has to proceed and in how much time it is how going. So, that can be seen using the CFD simulation also. So, that tells you that when you do the physical modeling, uh, it will be uh, giving you a sense that how the stressor is going to, do, to diffuse and how their concentration will be going to change. Now, uh, this is how the validation work is uh, uh, done and what validation means uh, you got the work from the uh, you know uh, from the experiment and similarly you got the uh, work from uh, the uh, you know uh, the from your work that is uh, simulation and on from the experiment. So, what you see normally that this is how there will be some matching and mismatching between these experiments, but they say you know for these two near and as well as the middle you see that they, there is uh, a match at which it starts and then uh, finally, you will have also in between you will be so having some matching and and, and then uh, that is how it is uh, uh, showing. So, this way you can do the uh, validation also by controlling all these uh, parameters and having uh, different conditions. Now, as uh, I told you that there may be different criteria which may be used to calculate that intermixed length. So, uh, you know you because in the in the plants uh, there may be situations when uh, you will have the possibility of casting two grades which are very much different from each other and uh, many a times you will have those situations when uh, they are not very much different from each other so you will have the stringent requirements you know and uh, on both these sides you have stringent requirements that suppose 1090 means any you know of, of, of anyone if it is more than 10 percent then in that case it is rejected like that. So, uh, 1090. So, similarly you have different you know uh, uh, requirements which needs to be fulfilled uh, to minimize those intermixed uh, grades. So, uh, that uh, needs to be kept in mind while uh, calculating that intermixed amount. So, uh, you know, uh, so depending upon that, that is what uh, it is uh, said that uh, how much it is being contaminated by old or new grade. So, based on that, you know, you will have those two points on the F curve and then you have to uh, take that uh, time, uh, you know, uh, duration and for that whatever is, uh, you know, getting uh, flowing that needs to be uh, removed. So, uh, there has been uh, you know uh, certain uh, results uh, for the different cases like uh, inflow rate was changed. Uh, so, uh, what was seen that inflow rate if you change from 2.35 meter per second uh, to uh, say 3.92 meter per second. So, how you know these uh, uh, you know how these amount uh, intermixed amount is changing how the uh, graph is changing. Suppose, this is your uh, near outlet and, and, and in this case also you have uh, this is the near outlet. So, if you look at these two curves you, you see the difference uh, with the change in the uh, inflow rate. 
and uh, also with the uh, bare tundis and also with tundis with APB when you use the advanced pouring boxes in those cases uh, uh, what will be the change so that also uh, can be you know uh, calculated you know in, in such cases. So, by, so that can be calculated. So, once you uh, uh, you know calculate for a particular kind of grid specification suppose for 1060 for uh, 2080 or 4060 grid specification these data can be you know calculated and uh, they tell that if you go for case 1 you know where the uh, you know flow of the um, uh, velocity was same and in this case flow was uh, you know increase in case 2 case 3 was uh, you know further increased so uh, so in those cases uh, what is going to happen so uh, you know as, as you see in this case you will have uh, the uh, bare tundis is this one and you will have tundis with apb so in the uh, bare case as you see uh, for 10 is to 60 grade specification as it can be seen here for the near outlet uh, as you have uh, this case once you use the advanced pouring box advanced the intermixing uh, amount is increasing so what you see that if you use these apbs your intermixing time is basically increasing does not uh, help much the intermixed amount it's basically because of the sense that uh, when you use these boxes uh, you know uh, otherwise it will go uh, uh, there will not be any mixing so what you expected that if you use uh, you know uh, the uh, if you go for the normal tundis so the old steel will be flushed first and then the new steel will come whereas if you use these flow modifiers both will mix first and in that case your intermixed amount uh, will go on increasing. So, that is what is evident you know uh, at each of the outlet in the bare tundis and the uh, tundis with uh, the APBs and uh, as you see that when you take these uh, uh, different cases in those cases uh, your it's like in uh, 1060 you get the maximum of these uh, in intermixing amount you know in this uh, case of the near outlet uh, like that. Uh, so, that will be uh, your uh, values of you now in this case it is uh, this uh, itself is a smaller one. So, it is minimum in this case this is the linear linear grade it is uh, you know hardly uh, it is about 7 or so and in this case it is close to 16 or so. So, what you see that this is being a uh, uh, you know uh, somewhat this strain is a stringent one. So, that is why your uh, um, amount is uh, higher in this uh, case 2080 as you see in this case it is uh, it is quite higher. So, that is uh, going up to uh, maybe close to 30 and, and close to 50 so in the case of the APB. So, that is the uh, result which is uh, observed when you use the advanced pouring boxes type of flow modifiers. So, that increases basically the uh, intermixed amount. So, uh, and also what you see that when you go from case 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 in that case the intermixed amount also is seen to uh, you know decrease in this case uh, when you take the 10 is to 60. So, basically it all depends upon uh, you know the, the kind of profile which you get the F curve which you are getting uh, you know when you do the mathematical modeling when you get the concentration you know which is there monitored at the outlet. So, how it is changing basically uh, in, in normal case uh, you know you as we have seen in normal case you expect that it should move like this. So, in, this means that there will be no intermixing and as uh, you know as the uh, this, this will be smaller and smaller in that case uh, your num amount of intermixing will be uh, increasing because uh, same thing will take large amount of time. So, the thing is that uh, uh, you know depending upon the type of uh, curve uh, you know that uh, um, amount of intermixing will be uh, changing and, and there may be many analysis based on the um, you know F curve you can analyze 
whether uh, it is going to be uh, uh, you know decreasing the um, uh, you know uh, the intermixed amount or the intermixed amount will be increasing. So, all these things can be you know found out. This is the velocity vector which is uh, uh, you know uh, showing that how you are increasing the um, you know velocity for the three cases. In one case it is about 1.78 then it is uh, increasing accordingly. So, uh, this is about the species concentration that you can draw and you can see that with time how your uh, you know concentration is increasing. So, from inlet it is increasing towards the so as the time is increasing how this pressure concentration is going to change after as the time is uh, uh, progressing and you can see that if you increase the uh, flow then in that case how it is uh, changing. So, with A p b and uh, without A p b as you see here it is uh, uh, there is change in that pressure concentration which is observed. Another study may be uh, which has been done is uh, you know uh, uh, on the residual volume of intermixing. So, as we discussed that whatever amount is left over in the turn days that is the residual volume. So, uh, what is that amount uh, and what is the its effect on the intermixed amount. So, uh, that may be uh, kept smaller it may be at a higher uh, you know uh, 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 height and uh, what is the inlet velocity which you are uh, maintaining. So, that you can have uh, the, uh, the velocities uh, uh, value is already there which is uh, you know measured. So, if you what is that effect on the residual uh, you know uh, volume and once having the residual volume means uh, when the uh, height is remaining at, at that particular volume fraction of 0.4 then you allow. In that case when it is 0.6 then you allow or when it is at 0.8 of height then you allow means when you are uh, allowing the new grade of steel to fall at that time what is the height of the steel uh, of that old component in the tundis. So, that is what the residual volume uh, fraction is and uh, this way the curve looks like when uh, uh, you will have uh, the uh, if you look at these velocities and uh, uh, these are the uh, you know uh, f curves uh, for the uh, you know uh, middle outlet near outlet and the uh, far outlet when inflow velocity was 0 0.2 0 0.35 uh, meter per second and uh, the residual volume fractions are uh, you know uh, changed what you see that when your residual volume fraction is uh, minimum in that case the slope is maximum and when your slope is maximum in that case the chances of the intermixed amount will be minimum. So, residual volume fraction if it is smaller and smaller that will be leading to the lower value of the uh, intermixed amounts that is what is seen you know even with the use of A p b's also you can have that uh, feeling uh, then that amount calculation also as you see is smallest when your residual volume fraction is uh, less. So, in those cases you are likely to have the minimum of the intermixed amount. So, this is again the residual uh, in those cases the concentration at the bottom wall of the tundis which is shown and uh, one is again the effect of outflow rate on the uh, intermixing. So, so that way you know uh, if you uh, look at the uh, inflow velocity that is uh, 2. Point, uh, uh, 3 5 meter that is constant and your flow velocity when you are changing to different values like 3 4 and 5 meter per second. So, uh, in that case uh, there may be change. So, basically the thing is that you can have uh, the different parameters changed and accordingly you can um, uh, calculate the intermixed amount and uh, you can suggest in the plant that if uh, you maintain this uh, flow rate or if you uh, you have the proper selection of these of uh, process parameters in those cases you are likely to have the minimum of uh, the intermixed amount and uh, the decrease in the value of intermixed amount will basically 
increase the productivity of the plant. So, this study can be done, you can, uh, you can work on this, you can have the uh, you know uh, results and you can analyze them. You can even analyze uh, based on the F curves because you have uh, you know as you see your typical F curve uh, goes like this and it may go like this, it may go like uh, you know it may go like this. Now, you see uh, in all these cases you can uh, by looking at and uh, this may go like this. So, by looking at the curve itself you can have the idea in which case there will be maximum of the intermixing. So, basically your uh, you know uh, slope higher that you see that will give you maximum intermixed amount. You see you might recall that when your slope will be smaller and this way when this is pulse input. Now, in that case you tell that mixing is higher. In this case when the slope is higher in that case you say that intermixing will be uh, minimum basically in that case intermixing will be minimum this will be intermixing will be uh, maximum. So, these studies depending upon even you can have the study based on the uh, you know depending upon the criteria and you can have the different zones and you can discuss about the, the slope values in the different zones and you can analyze the amount of intermixed uh, you know intermixed amount formation. So, these studies can be calculated can be done to have the analysis of the intermixing process uh, and you can uh, do it. Thank you very much.